Amanda O'Brien, and I'm the Director for Disability Support Services. Disability Support Services is a program that is established to help the university meet obligations under two federal laws, the Americans with Disabilities Act and Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act. So our role is to ensure equal access for students who have disabilities to be able to fully participate and um, engage at the university. To be eligible for services with Disability Support Services, students have to go through an application process. So they can do that application online or they can pick up a paper copy in our office in Knight Hall. They also must submit documentation that qualifies them as a student with a disability. So that information needs to come from a reputable third party and speak to the student's condition and how it directly affects their academic um, access. Some of the typical accommodations that we offer through Disability Support Services are extra testing time. That's our biggest one. Um, that's for students who are eligible for an, some additional testing time or need a quiet location from the classroom to be able to take their exams. We also provide books in alternative formats, so that might mean Braille or in audio. We can also provide all the interpreting and transcribing for students across campus as well as visitors and community events as requested. Um, we also work with advocacy for students who need it with faculty, um, but if an accommodation fundamentally alters a program or course learning objective or outcome, we have to engage in the interactive process to ensure that we can meet the students' needs as well as not impacting the class in a negative way. Disability Support Services does not provide testing for learning assessments, ADHD, or emotional conditions. However, if a student discloses to you that they've had struggles um, with academics in the past, uh, it can open the door for a conversation to maybe asking them if they've had special services in the past or if they've had any kind of assessment testing done for learning. If a student still says no, you can definitely refer to our office. We have a list of local providers as well as a couple campus resources that we can share with students to be able to pursue that testing if that's something that they choose to do. Students who have a temporary injury or medical condition are sometimes eligible for services if, if it, what they need is something that's related to academics. We evaluate those just like everything else on a case-by-case -case basis. We do typically request some documentation including an estimated recovery time and we'll work with each student individually as well as their faculty to determine how we can assist or if there's um, things that they do need to be able to access their coursework. Test anxiety in and of itself typically is not considered to be a disabling condition. However, some students find that there's an underlying condition that causes the test anxiety. So we might make a referral to the counseling center or other uh, similar places who can help with some of those factors that contribute to test anxiety, as well as help to build the student's coping mechanism. If there does uh, turn out to be an underlying condition such as a learning disability or some generalized anxiety conditions, students may then be eligible for disability support services and appropriate accommodations at that point. Disability Support Services does maintain student records confidenti confidentially, so they are kept in our office and typically information around a student's accommodation or eligibility for services is kept private. Um, most of our correspondence with faculty is very generic in nature and we do not release uh, specifics of a student's condition unless there's an educational need to know or another situation that arises that that information does need to be shared. I think it's important for advisors to know that you don't have to have all the answers. If a student discloses that they have a disability, 
it's a fair question to ask if they're familiar with the Disability Support Service Office. If a student wants to know what classes might work better because of their disability and they're willing to sign a consent form or schedule an appointment with their disability support coordinator, we are happy to have that conversation. Uh, academic advisors really don't have to know all the ins and outs of what we do and we're happy to consult um, hypothetically if a student doesn't want to sign a consent form or engaging in that interactive process between departments if a student does want that support. One of the most rewarding aspects of my job is seeing students through. Um, it's a lot of fun to watch them come be drugged to our table by a parent during orientation and then a little bit every semester they're a little bit more independent and figuring things out a little bit more and ultimately it's it's the best success when we see them by the time they're seniors and they come to their appointments just to say hi not because they need anything anymore and then even more so if they happen to come back and tell us that they couldn't have done it without our office or they've got this wonderful job opportunity and part of that was thanks to us because we helped them get through their college career and on to their next goals of their life.